Mai from New York. It's Ask an Engineer and a bunch of creative engineers. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ask Engineers. Today, we've got a special guest. This is a special week. It's Maker Fair Week. We've got an exciting show for you with all sorts of cool things, new product news, videos. Guests, of course. It's me, Lady Ada. With me, Mr. Lady Ada. We also have... John Park. Hello. And... Tony D. Hey. Wow. Nice remote Ada Food folks you here. You may know them from such show as Test of Tony D. John yep. Park's Workshop. <laughs> That's us. I just wanted to th that Simpsons thing. They exist in a lot. You know, it's like you said, wow, you're like meeting people in there. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Physical meat space people. Yeah. Are real. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to kick this off? Well, I think we should just kick this off. Okay. Let's kick this off. On tonight's show, the code is World MFNC. That's in celebration of World Maker Fair New York City. It supports us, an open source hardware company. We're here in New York. We manufacture stuff. You've been here before, JP. This was not This was not a lie. It actually is here. <laughs> this That's is the true. first. Yeah. It's true. Yep. Yep. We we'll make stuff here. Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Um, my mind was blown. I'm still dealing with it. It was a really good show and tell. Oh my gosh. Um, packed mail back then to stop by, but tonight we're going to be sending out shout outs and hug reports to y'all. Time travel. Look back in the world. Makers, hackers, artists, engineers. This week we're going to be talking about the future. I'm in New York City, we have some factory footage, 3D printing, micro bit stuff, Raspberry Pi new products, you'll answer your question, and even though I don't have a slide for this later, we're still going to do Top Secret. Oh, you too? Wow, yeah, thank you. Yeah, but not the other one. That's fine. We're going to do a trivia question, all that and more on Ask an Engineer. Yay! I'm happy. All right, well, first up, Tony, John, thanks for coming coming out. Thank you, it's so awesome to be here. Thanks for being part of this adventure with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's show and tell. Um, interesting, we'll, we'll get to that, but boy, like sometimes you work on something and, and things happen and, and, and people do amazing stuff with it and you don't even think that you never imagine that. Like, They're going to do this with that? Yeah. So yeah. that was That's cool. cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Bills. Uh, we'll make a fair NYC. This is show and tell. Oh, sorry. Show and tell is 7.30. This is Ask an Engineer at PM. Hello. We have same day uh, shipping when you check out before 11 a.m. in New York City for certain zip codes. $200 or more for UPS ground. We've got DHL going on. Um, DHL is neat. Um, I say this neat show, but this allows our international customers, and I just did a, U a YouTube report. We have a lot of international people that watch our shows, so they can, um, if they're in Canada, UK, Germany, France, Belgium, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, they can check out, and there's prepaid customs, no fees, no anything. If you've ever heard friends overseas, they buy something from the US, and it costs like a million times more because they get taxes and duties and import fees, so uh, that is all taken care of before they get the package. So that's kind of fun. So we're going to yes. keep that up. All right. Chantel, lady, this was... Uh, it's jam-packed. I'm still dealing with it. I know. You're reeling. Yeah. You're All right. well, freaking a bit. What, was, what happened with Chantel? Okay. So we had a bunch... Well, of course, we have our folks here. But we also have, from remote Adafruit folks, we had Erin, who has a really cool guy she's coming out with very soon. It's fiber optic whips. But, like, they they have these fiber optics, and she's using trinkets and neopixels to make them so they change color. So... Uh, 3D printed handle and battery built in, so it's all good. Uh, Known Pedro um, kind of showed off their project this week, which is 3D printing a molded stamps. They talked about that on uh, the 3D Hangouts that they had today, and uh, they were going to preview something, but then they ended up turning it into a cliffhanger. So you're going to have to check out the next show where they talk about their next week's project, which is really, really adorable. It's the cutest. Um, and Scott w has been working on SAMD51, the Cortex M4 version of CircuitPython, and Blinky Works. So he's both got LED turning on and off, and the REPL, and time delay, which is like actually kind of everything you need to do anything. So it's pretty much done. done. Yeah. Call it done. Ship it. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we're going to do some more, but it's, he's getting really far, and uh, he'll be visiting us in New York as well. Uh, and he also wanted to give a shout out to the Discord chat. We have a Discord chat for Maker Fair New York. Uh, Phil will talk about that shortly. So if you want to hang out with us and hang out with other people at Maker Fair, uh, hold on and Phil will get you there. We have some news about that. We give you some news. Just let me get through this and we'll get there. Orlando had a pulse bit demo. He used the, uh, um, the pulse sensor that we carry in the store. He used that open source design and code to update his pulse bit. Uh, Matt D came by, he's been doing more pie glass hacking with only 15 lines of code. He added OpenCV picture in picture, uh, sorry, 15 lines of Python OpenCV code. He added picture in picture to his pie glass. He showed a demo of it. So like you can see the world and you have like another picture. So it's like really 
cool. It's just like the, the Google Glass, but doesn't sell you out for AdWords uh, targeting. Uh, I don't know if that really happened with uh, Google Glass. But they never said it didn't. But they didn't say it didn't. They didn't so, say it didn't had, steal your soul. And either. I had to click through some type of agreement Good. to put my glasses on. Uh, like a delay. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, no, so, oh. So, Ow. I, so, like, I kind of like that someone's making an open source one. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I think it's okay. a good idea. We had Adam, who is at the University of Maine, doing some scanlatron microscope imagery with ice, trying to figure out what's going to happen with these glaciers. Other than them all melting, maybe they can figure out what they do before they all melt, because the planet is going to explode. Uh, and while he was doing that, he noticed that when he turned on like the beam tool, it would sometimes like poke a hole in the thing he was looking at. So he made a, a was it like 400 micron wide Adafruit logo etched into not ice, but I don't know what it was. It was some material. Yeah. And uh, it was really cool. It's the smallest Adafruit. And he just said I think he it said, was ice. It was ice. He said yeah. the, the frustrating thing about it is that there was no built-in drawing tool with the scanning electron microscope, which is like a total shame. <laughs> yeah. It should be. Missed opportunity. Yeah. I so think, you need to like dot each dot. You know, like I think it. I made a terrible mistake because, you know, this video is going to say, it's going to be up forever. They're called servers, but they're keepers. And so I gave Adam a worldwide perpetual forever trademark to make the Adafruit logo. Very tiny. Very tiny. So you use scanning electron microscope. So that could last forever. Fine. All right, well. I mean, he could, like, etch into titanium or something cool. All right, so that's, and then uh, he's coming to uh, New York City Maker Faire also. And also mentioned this Discord chat if you want to hang out with him. He cannot bring a scan electron microscope. Yeah. He looked. There was no pocket-sized one. Uh, C. Scott uh, checked in. He's got a day job now, but it's a really cool day job at an exhibition consulting company. They make uh, museum exhibits and yeah. event exhibits. He had an owl. He asked us how the owl was, and you said, is it synthetic? And he said... It's like expensive. all things here, it's very expensive. Like yeah, if you're into expensive. like the beginning of Blade Runner, see Rachel, she didn't really know that she was a replicant right away. It seemed, mm. and it kind of caused some. I don't want to ruin the movie for you or anything. Uh, also, Nobcon update, and uh, finish off. We had some amazing two people who showed up, and they're very young makers, around eight years old, making a micro Python operating system with 600 lines of code and four kilobytes of RAM. It's called JMKOS. And maybe we're going to help them out with some hardware so they can write. They're going. They're making a MicroPython operating system, and I'd like to check this out. So I, it's really cool. I have to. I'm going to watch the show and tell again. But I think it's like, well, we chose Adafruit our products because they, we could do this in 4K RAM. Okay. Like it was. It was actually pretty amazing. Which is a lot of RAM. Yeah. It was just. It was amazing that you can do so much, so soon, and like the show and tell kind of lets us see that. So that was neat. So JP, you have a show and tell thing, And right? then you yeah. show us stuff. Yeah, so we, yeah. we saved this because we had some We saved this. People. Let me show so a show and tell. Yeah, I'm going to go to the bigger screen. So <laughs> don't adjust your, your YouTube sets, sure. folks. Does this, that probably picks me up, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, up yeah that's fine. All right. Let me turn it on. So this is <laughs> the opposite of Adam, who makes <laughs> tiny Adafruit stuff. I made the very big, I'm going to hide behind it. I made the very large uh, Metro M0 Express XXL, I'm calling it. Yeah. Uh, so this is a sort of functioning um, macro controller. Yeah. You could call it. Macro controller. So uh, what I've done here is uh, I took our designs and I made a 10x scale. So this is 21 inches by 27 inches. The, the normal one is 2.1 by 2.7. Uh, and I made it out of, this is quarter inch ABS plastic that I got that has like a textured finish on one side and uh, shiny on the back. Shade the back. There's not much on there right now other than shiny. I like the gigantic yeah. bolts. And big bolts holding it together, quarter inch screws. Uh, so I have just completed building a CNC router kit from CNC router parts. And this was basically the first thing that I, that I made on it. So I routed, uh, using a, an engraving bit. It's like a, I have a 90 degree angle V-shaped bit that I sunk down in just a, a few millimeters and outlined all of the graphics on here so that had like a nice strong uh, line cut into it. And <clears throat> then I uh, routed out the rest of the shape. And then I did some cleanup on these spots and inked them. I actually used these, there's these really great uh, acrylic ink pens. The brand is called Molito. And people, I know graffiti artists like them. They have these big drip pens. But uh, actually, my wife went to the uh, art supply store, and she came back with this chrome one. I don't know if we can it's shiny, show yeah. the Adafruit logo Ooh, itself. Nice. It's going to shine a bit. So I did the rest of it in, like, they call it signal white. But I was really excited about this very chromey chrome on there. 
Uh, then I 3D printed uh, the, the parts for the headers and these capacitors, this reset switch, uh, and I, I recessed, I did a little 2D pocket part, part way through in the, in the router uh, cam setup so that I could set a jewel. So this jewel represents the onboard NeoPixel that's uh, usually on there. I just have it blinking right now. But the cool thing is that this is running CircuitPython, and so uh, I'll be able to demonstrate this to people just by plugging it in, going to the REPL, or saving um, Python files directly to the board, and showing on kind of really large scale what happens when you start typing in these commands in Python. For now, just with like the little jewel, um, but this is kind of like a version one or like a beta. So what I, what I plan to do eventually is replace these non-functional headers with uh, quarter inch jacks, like, like a guitar phono cable kind of jacks so that I can plug real stuff into it. Mm, that's plug a good idea. Dials. Yeah, and you can make cables. Yeah, we, we stuck those parts big too. cables, yeah. Uh, and right now actually also the other sort of cool functional thing is this, um, power plug here is where I've got <laughs> my power. So I have a LiPo battery and one of our uh, PowerBoost 1000Cs, which is a, a really cool little power up, up converter, uh, and it can charge the battery there. So I just stuck that in there and ran, we have these USB to DC barrel jack yeah. adapters. So I ran that uh, through a little hole that's in here. All of these parts actually have two screw holes and they have a hole to run wiring because I wasn't sure what, what things I would end up putting real stuff into. So that runs under the board and then over to the real um, Metro and I've sand I'll leave that open. I've sandwiched this. It's actually two layers. So I routed two of these and I put like a little spacer in there. So my wiring oh. is not exposed on the back. Sneaky. So I can always open that up. It's pretty easy as uh, eight screws or whatever. And then uh, set some new new parts and stuff in there. Sounds cool. And at Maker Faire, um, DigiKey has a very large circuit playground. Yeah. So you can bring the very large Metro yeah. to meet the Yay. circuit playground. Yeah, I think we're going to try to bring it over there to, to, yeah. to be friends. So if, you, yeah, so if you're coming to Maker Faire and you want to check this out, I think we'll have it at the DigiKey booth. This yeah. is probably news to DigiKey, so. <laughs> they're, they're in the chat. If, uh, if you guys are okay with that, then uh, we'd love to have this uh, hanging at your booth because my other thought was to put backpack straps on it and to walk around because at Bay Area Maker Faire, I saw a guy, uh, I forget his name now, but he had this great, um, he called it the commute deck, and I think he brought it on the show and tell at one point. It was a Raspberry Pi with a keyboard and a display, and he, he built it to take on the subway. Uh, and he was just wearing it with like a guitar strap around his back. Yeah. And so everyone noticed it, which I thought was brilliant. So the, if I had the patience for it, I'd, I'd sandwich board style walk around Maker Faire with, with this thing hanging off of me. We'll see. No promises. The world is ripple. Yeah, this is amazing. Okay. Thank you. This is great. Yeah. Good it. work. Yeah, it's nice routing. Ooh. Routing. Wow. So in the chat, they said, someone said they held up their metro to the screen, and the scale works. Yes. It does, yeah, right? Yeah, if yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah. Where did you get the 3D model? Did you model this? Or did yeah, you so I, I modeled, I 3D modeled this in Rhino. It happens to be the software I use the most, uh, and 3D printed. This stuff, I developed the curves. Uh, actually, I, I got uh, <laughs> Illustrator files from Phil B., uh, and then I did some massaging of those inside of Rhino and then sent those curves out to Fusion 360. So Fusion 360 uh, is pretty great because it bundles up a few pieces of the tool chain of, of CNC so that you can design the model in there, but then you can do the cam. And the cam is where you're actually saying things like, I want to use this kind of bit to do this kind of a cut and so it generates a tool path that you can then simulate in there so you can do this reality check and it'll go through and it'll boolean out a, a solid and you can see is it going to collide with stuff is it going to leave marks in places so um that's great because in previous like in the old days of cnc you didn't have all that hand holding so it's actually really uh nice it's a free tool too um that's cool. so yeah, so I used that to export G-code files out to then the uh, the laptop that was running the router and cut all that stuff. Okay, right, thanks sweet. for keeping the, the font and the logo right. Yes. Right. <laughs> I have to get the brand cops after you. Okay. Uh -oh. All right, well, thanks for the, the show and tell yeah. uh, item here. Okay, I'm going to hand this down. Okay. Do you want to put this on the go? Oh, all right. There.
can eat off of it. Yeah. So, uh, next up, that was part of Raid for it. Wait, it, Tony, did you want to show something? Uh, series, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. Super fast show and tell. Yeah, we'll so, we'll uh, you probably can't see we're surrounded by Adafruit's collection of weird and wonderful stuff, all of our past projects. So, I have a few things to add to it. This is a snap bracelet that is like the Blinka, the Circuit Python snap bracelet. Oh, you can. They're probably super cool. You could probably put it under the overhead too. If you uh, ooh, oh, yeah. Let's see if we can see. So, what you got? Might be able to see that. So, yeah, there we go. So, uh, and if you don't remember, these are from the 80s. Uh, well, let's see. You snap it on. Oh, that's uh, cool. And oh, yeah. Everything old is new again, so this is kind of cool. And then Phil will be very excited about this. This goes for a very special collection. I got this at Rose City Comic Con in oh. Portland, Oregon. These are Dune <gasps> trading cards wow. in the pack yeah. with the gum from 1984. <laughs> so you probably don't know. The gum always tastes the same. The gum is going to be The gum was no always tasted. Oh. No change. So can you put those under the overhead? It, you oh, can yeah, lift totally. the overhead. So, uh, and there, oh, I, I didn't get all three, unfortunately. So there's uh, Baron Harkonnen. Uh, let's see. Oh, there oh yeah. Can move and it then uh, I, I forget who that is. My Dune knowledge is not very good. That's, uh, that's uh, Airline. I got a uh, Paul Atreides, Atreides Ricky card. Yay. Yeah, so who knows what's in here? They're sealed. I mean, these could be collector's items someday. So All right. Well, thank I you so much. the collection of Dune stuff. This is like the best thing ever. <laughs> this is like the one day. I didn't even know these existed. Oh, yeah. I like how they came up with these things that were like terrible, terrible ideas. I mean, like, they, yeah. this is not. That's how I'm like, oh, this is going to be the next Star Wars. No, it's not. No. Yeah, it's absolutely not. That's why it's nice. Yeah. All right. It's goth Star Wars. It's goth Wars. Okay. It's okay. Um, it's all part of our Aid Fruit live series, uh, videos, events, and more. Um, some stuff that's going on with Discord. And uh, I'm going to ask Tony to show maybe or talk about some Circuit Python stuff in a second. But some news um, Adafruit.it slash Discord. That takes you to our Discord channel. It's moderated, it's fun, it's the. Um, 24-7 hacker space that you can bring your granddaughter to and we're also doing some neat stuff So if you're gonna be at Maker Faire go to the discord channel and go to the event section at community moderators We'll add you and you can meet up with us in person. We're also doing that at the open hardware summit Hooray, and we're giving away sparky blue smoke smoke monster pins in the chat. So um, You know we all we're all part of this maker world So, you know all the contests that are like build the craziest thing it takes like a year and just like it's like go to space or something and um, that's a hard project to do, and along the way, you probably don't want to show the failures. So they're like, well, like maybe we can give people a Sparky pen if they mess up. So like, it's okay to mess up. Yeah. So that's the cool thing about messing up is you know when you've messed up almost immediately, but if you've succeeded, it sometimes takes a long time to know. Ooh. So it was a big project. Wisdom. Deep. Deep. Okay. So Tony, as one of our resident experts on Circuit Python, all things. Well, you Python. have this snake on uh, your wrist. Yeah, I've yeah. got the, the Circuit Python <laughs> the is on me. That's right? the yeah. So I'm going to say, as, right. as part of your show and tell, um, you have you're wearing one. It looks like. Uh, too. Yes, I actually I have a couple Circuit Python things. Uh, it's hard to see. Uh, if I can get my feet up here. These are uh, maybe tap my shoe right there if you can. Or, or <laughs> there you go. See, that kind of <laughs> lights up. That is the Circuit Walker sneakers. Okay, so uh, it's basically using the accelerometer. So these are both Circuit Playground Express. And then on my chest, I'm actually dressed as Tony Stark. So you may not know that. that I'm Tony S today. Uh, and basically, this is my arc reactor, also Circuit Python powered. Uh, and if you want to learn more about these, if you come to World Maker Fair, I'll actually show a little demo. I have a talk uh, make with Python, but I also did one in Seattle uh, about it. And we'll see. We'll do a lot more in the future with these. So just kind of cool projects. And again, it's totally all Python code. I started with Arduino versions, and then I iterated over it and kind of looked at how to convert that into Python code. So really cool to to see that, and it works super well. Yeah, that's great. This has real fast animations, like neat colors and things. Look how well you can see it on the camera so. too. Like yeah, oh, it's yeah. really good on camera. Yeah. It, it shines through the shirt. I just have it. Uh, there's a magnet on the back and it's just hooked to an undershirt on here so real simple and easy okay well hold on to the mic so tony if people are at maker fair when can they see you yeah so sunday at 4 p.m in zone 3 electronics i believe okay. is the talk it's uh, called make with python 30 minutes and it's just going to be an overview of what you can do with python uh, kind of what your appetite, uh, you're, you're not going to learn Python in this talk, but I'll give you links to really good resources for how you can learn Python and show you cool examples and some live demos. So there's always the tension and fun of will it work or not, so we'll see what happens. Okay. JP, what are you doing at Maker Faire? I was just checking my schedule to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what I know, aren't you doing at Maker Faire? I know for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm doing two different uh, talks on Saturday at, I believe it's 2 to 2.45. Uh, there's a group of us in a panel discussion about making YouTube videos. Making, I'm interested uh, in that. Videos for, yeah, it's something, it's, I'm so excited to be part of it, but also to hear it. I've, I've heard people yeah. do some of these talks before, and it's so interesting to hear about the tips and tricks and the trade craft yeah. of doing this, because yeah. most people 
are making things up as they go along. Yeah. A lot of people are like a one man band, yeah. uh, like yeah. my situation where you're doing all of the pieces. <laughs> you're seeing the other side of this, like yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, I'm excited to, to <laughs> Why are you doing this here? listen to people's tips. Uh, Becky Stern will be there. Bob yep. Faggett will be there. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have started naming names because I can't remember everyone who's there. But uh, it's lots of people who make lots of videos on and other makers and yeah. other great Joel yeah. Telling. Yeah. Thank you. And now we're down to just one who I forget, but another 3D printing. Uh, we're gonna check real quick because that's embarrassing. We'll, uh, we'll fix it in post. And then I'll uh, <laughs> move very quickly so you forget about that. To Sunday at 11:30, I believe I'm doing a talk about mystery boxes. So I've brought. A few actually I shipped here to New York, a Pelican case full of some of my smaller mystery boxes and pieces and parts from some of the bigger ones. And I'm going to go over uh, some of the making of those and how okay. you can extend some of the concepts learned in those to puzzles and escape room things and a, a lot of fun uh, Halloween tricks and things that involve some of the uh, fundamental electronic bits that make those things okay. wonderful. And I think we're also um, probably going to do a meetup at some point some of the days so just be in the discord chat because a lot of it's hard to coordinate so yep. stay tuned to that okay that sounds good all right moving right along more news um this is a shout out to this magazine mechanics illustrated and angus. angus angus devison thank you that's the other uh, yes, person angus. we are making on youtube so they're relaunching popular electronics mechanics illustrated and popular astronomy and this is the latest one um this is mike massimo um funny massimo is no matter what i'm still writing about massimo stuff so um Adafruit has an ad in this one. Um, they didn't charge us. It's uh, it's Adabot, and it says learn how to build robot friends. And I looked into these magazines, and I talked with the editor, and they're really servicing this market and arena. So if you like things like Popular Science or Make or Diode New One or Twenty Six Hundred or pretty yeah. much all the stuff that we all read, they're free. Um, my my review online was like I don't know if they spam you when you sign up like do whatever you normally do like I don't I don't know I don't get spam so um, but sign up and it's free iPad versions so we started talking to them so we're gonna do a bunch of stuff um, they're relaunching this and popular mechanics that was one of my make talks where I, I I did a look back at all the popular mechanics and it was totally normal for a lady to be on the cover and she made a guitar or she had an op amp thing or she was like hacking a theremin. And that, that world kind of went away for a while, yeah. and now it's back. So um, we have some ideas and weird stuff um, that we're going to be doing with them. Neat. So, yeah, so that's coming up. So I just want to give a shout-out because it's rare when you can – it's kind of like CircuitPython. You know, we're at the beginning. We could do lots of cool stuff because it's not 10 years old. You're not stuck with the last 10 years. You can do a lot. So this magazine with this relaunch. So where will people go to find out more? Um, just Google for it. <laughs> mechanics. That's what it's yeah. called. The next. Yeah, it's popular really electronics. Yeah. In oh, mechanic, popular electronics. In mechanics. Popular electronics. Yeah, it's good magazines. Do you know what they, so were they were they purchased and then they spun out again? You know, um, I I don't know because like once I start looking no, into something, it, it yeah, just yeah, yeah, gets yeah. crazy. Someone owns it. They're doing a good job. They're doing it again. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah, it's That's neat. Cool. I have no idea. Yeah. So, anyways, and, and I don't really get a chance to do reviews or anything most of the time because magazines are kind of terrible. So if there's something good, I'll just say it normally and just like, eh, don't say anything unless you like it. So, anyways, good good magazine. I'm like, wow, this is a lot of stuff I want to do with Make or 2600, Popular Science, a lot of things that, that I wanted to do. So I, I was thinking about your stuff. JP, because it's like CNC and then microcontroller. It's like they combine those things. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So that's my shout out for them. Open source hardware, Lady Ada. Yes. Open source hardware company. 1,288 guides. Okay. This week for guides, we got some good ones. Okay. So the Adabox 005 guide um, that went live. So if you have an Adabox 005, check that out. If you don't, you can keep it a secret until you get it by not looking at the guide. But uh, check that out, and uh, we're also going to do, I think, uh, a unboxing and Q&A very shortly. Uh, PT will maybe talk about that soon. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Uh, I just want to get that right. And then uh, we also have, uh, Tony, you did some CircuitPython basics, I2C, and SPI guide. That's yeah, the... Yeah, Tony, what was this guide about? Talk about that guide. Yeah. Yeah, and actually there's a bunch of guides. Uh, so these were guides we did in the past on MicroPython, like how to use all the feather wings, stuff like OLED display, LCD backpacks. Uh, and we've gone through and I'm working on updating them all so they work with CircuitPython uh, and both MicroPython. So you can see both versions. Uh, so check them out. There's, I think, five of them or four of them now. So pretty much every old MicroPython guide will have a CircuitPython analog very soon, right. if not now. Okay, and then next up, not coincidentally, is the Haunted Portrait Guide. Who would know about that? Hey, I know about that. That's my uh, project that I built for Adabox 05, and it's also a timely, seasonal, Halloween-y, spooky type of thing. It's the Haunted Portrait. 
and it is a guide to using the Raspberry Pi Zero as a sort of slideshow picture player image uh, playback. Uh, but the twist on it is that I'm showing how to use an LCD panel or a monitor uh, framed, kind of wall-to-wall -wall framed. In this case, I removed, I, I basically ripped the panel out of a TV so that I could get uh, a decorative frame. Uh, I rebuilt a decorative frame really close to it so that it looks like a painting. Uh, and then I talk a little bit about some of the lighting conditions to do this sort of thing in a theme park or a haunted mansion so that it looks like a painting until you realize that Every once in a while he looks away or every once in a while he closes his eyes. And that's actually my great-great-grandfather, William Park, uh, that I took a picture of his portrait that I have and used it to then generate some variations on his eyes. I talk a little bit in the guide about using Photoshop or GIMP to do some image manipulation like that. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty neat for people to see how you can use with the Joy Bonnet on top of the Pi Zero as a little bit of a controller. Uh, you can use it as, as this type of an image player. Uh, for a cool, spooky effect. And good for Halloween. Yeah, and this is a this is a popular kind of project people try to do. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, sorry, I don't even need this. You don't need uh, that, but yeah, okay. well, I don't know why I grabbed it. And yeah. then, of course, we had right. uh, the Ultimate YouTube Live Camera. This is a project that Tinkernut did, and we thought was so cool that we invited them to put the guide up on Adafruit, and they did, and they did a lovely job. So um, it will also live there because it just used all of our stuff, and I thought it was a really neat uh, project. It's kind of an all-in-one YouTube stream. You know, you can't do overlays and stuff, but... Uh, if you just want to stream something, uh, it's an all-in-one box. That's cool. Okay. All right. So next up, there was some Arduino stuff. Um, I'm totally not doing um, my normal Arduino news. I'm off that beat for a while. So uh, Arduino posted this up. They said, guess what we're releasing? So I thought I would ask... Um, I guess it's time to guess, huh? The smart people I know who are way smarter than me about this stuff. Um, what is this? What, do you, what are your guesses? We'll start with Lady Ada. What do you think this is? Okay, well, I have no knowledge beyond these two they, images. They, they definitely didn't tell us anything. They didn't tell me, so... <laughs> no one tells us anything about Arduino at all, so we know nothing about this. So the thing on the left, um, you know, there's a micro USB jack on the top left there, and then there's a sort of battery terminal plug, and then there's a reset button. And this kind of makes me think, and there's a kind of a round corner with a mounting hole. This makes me think of the Maker 1000 series, so I think this is another... Maker 1000 board, and I know that they did one with Sigfox. That was the last one they did, and so Sigfox, you know, kind of is uh, sister and brother to Laura. So if I had to guess, um, it's a Laura Maker 1000. And the thing on the right is a little tougher, um, but you see female headers on the top, bottom right, and a battery socket. So, you know. It could be, I don't think it's a Maker 1000 because it doesn't have the same, I don't think it's the same kind of orientation. Um, but it's maybe some sort of power, maybe a Bluetooth low energy Arduino or, or Shield or compatible or something. But this one's a little tougher because you, know, you only see the, the LiPo battery socket and some headers. I don't have a, a, enough information for Tony, that Tony, John, any guesses? Well, mine is not as informed or intelligent, <laughs> but I think the one on the left looks like a robot and the one on the right looks like a space invader. Okay. So I think robot shield and game emulation shield. Okay. okay. Or, Tony, or, do what do you think? That is, by the way, like, I'm just bullshitting. Like, <laughs> yeah. it could be, I, I mean, like, if you're right, I'm going to be like... Oh, mm. yeah. So well, they like graphic design there at Arduino. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I, I put some stock in that. I know. That's a wise. <laughs> the one on the right, uh, that chip on the lower left, that's a big chip. Like, that has a lot of pins, it looks like. I mean, I don't know what that could be. It tells me maybe something kind of complex thing like maybe bluetooth like uh, you mentioned lady ada the other yeah. thing too both of them have kind of the gold bottom which reminds me of the micro bit and the mm. way that it breaks Ooh. out the gpio and things like that so maybe it's like a card edge connector Ew. could you know. be design element Ooh. Yeah. could be could be something inspiration yeah, yeah. could be a physical connector yeah, all right well we'll know soon saturday yeah, is state of arduino okay that'll be very interesting all right. yeah. keep, i'm keeping my guesses out very cool all right shout out to digikey we're still doing the buy one give one buy a circuit playground classic edition they give one to girls who code yay and right. they've, they've said it's very successful yeah um i usually talk about our newsletter a little bit uh tony you're one of the authors on the micropython world of newsletters what was one of the articles or posts that you made recently yeah so i think the interesting news in micropython world uh, is actually with circuit python so we had the 2.0 release uh, hot off the presses last week, so grab that to get the latest bits and start playing with it. And then I also mentioned in the last um, newsletter uh, a bunch of updated guides. So like I said, 
Uh, there's a bunch of like I squared C and Spy and Analog, and Digital IO, uh, also updated Featherwing guides I listed, and then all the Gemma guides uh, that, you, that Lady Ada and Phil B have been working on. So there's like five or six right now, and a whole bunch more coming. Uh, so basically, if you're looking for Circuit Python guides and info. Keep your eyes peeled on learn.adfood.com and maybe subscribe to the newsletter because I'll also list out as we update more guides which ones are updated there. Okay. Yeah, and as always, uh, Adafruit Daily doesn't spam you, nothing like that. We, um, it's a whole separate site. It works. You'll like it. Okay. Manufacturing videos. We're going to play these. So cool. I'll get a break for like a minute. A little dance. Then enjoy yourselves. So these, you have to do some guessing. Maybe Lady Eddie can talk about what is this. Okay, so this is the Circuit Playground um, Express. Fudge. And it's fudge. <laughs> yeah. It's This is, they're I mean, looking like they're making a bunch of boards. So they put down some solder paste. And, you know, you've got to make little roses with it or something. Carrots, I guess it looks like. And then they're going to use the squeegee machine, the stenciler, to squeegee it into those holes. Okay. Um, this is the board loader, I believe, and those are the hydraulic lines for the board loader. That's kind of like exactly what machine this is. Sorry, no, this is the selective machine, yeah. and this is sort of a tour of, so that thing we're looking at right now, that's the nozzle that the molten solder comes out of, and underneath there is like 100 pounds of molten solder, and there it comes. That's molten metal. It yeah. looks just like water, but it's not. It's insanely hot. I think this one is pretty obvious. And that's more of the molten solder. It's before the nozzle goes on, but that's just testing the flow. But it's kind of cool because it's like slow mode and you can see it moving. Mm -hmm. So there's two nozzles. There's the one behind isn't on right now, just the one in front. Yep. It's working really good. That looks nice. Kind of okay. beautiful. It's like Terminator. And here's a moonscape, a moonset. This is what our picking places see when they go to sleep at night. Can I ask a quick question? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm right here. Let's ask an engineer. Let's ask, an engineer. Let's ask this engineer. So I had a question actually from someone online who uh, had suffered a stroke recently, but he was a computer programmer who had gotten interested in electronics, and yeah. he was asking about ideas around soldering when he has a hard time using one side of his, of his body. Mm. And I was curious about solder pots, like for, for certain types of things, like putting header pins in a Raspberry Pi, could you, or Pi Zero, could you dip? Uh, into a little solder pot, or does that kind of mess with what's you, already soldered You can do, yeah, well first off, the thing about the solder pot is, unlike the Selective, the so Selective has a nozzle. So the nice thing about it is even though you have stuff on the bottom, the nozzle just like shoots the solder where right where it has to. By the way, it's like, you know, you have to get a very expensive machine with the flux and also a nitrogen environment to get really clean solder points. Mm -hmm. A solder pot for individuals isn't going to be really useful. It's only good for like wire, where you're just like dipping a little wire. And so it's good for tinning wire. So like people I know who've, who've had solder pots for hobbyist use, is they're like, I am making like a metric buttload of wiring connectors mm -hmm. for like a Burning Man project. Yep. This is the one time I used it, where you strip it and then you dip it. Yep. And you don't, don't have to tin. But for soldering, it's not very good because it's dirty. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's, it has a lot of cruft on it. But not only that, it's, um, it's just, it's not going to make good solder connections, and yeah, it's like a it's a flat surface. You have to dunk the whole thing. So I think if somebody said, "Look, I only have you know one uh, one side of my body that I can use," um, I really like the the mag holders that we have in the store because you know you have to do a lot of jigging, yep. but you can jig a lot of stuff up because like a, a lot of what people normally use is um, you know they use they hold the thing with one hand maybe in some solder. 
But here's actually a trick that I've seen. So if you look at videos of um, people making cables, so USB cables are actually made by hand oftentimes. Um, what they do in the factory is they actually stick the soldering iron in the vise mm -hmm. and then they, they solder it. So I think actually, even though it's counterintuitive, you'd think, oh, the soldering iron is um, the thing you would hold. It's the tool. That's actually the thing you fix. And then you hold the yeah. board to the soldering iron. And that way you don't have to hold the soldering iron. Uh -huh. But it's counterintuitive because normally people think, oh, you want to hold the board. And right. then, but if you, if you have very limited mobility, I would actually fix the soldering iron. Try mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Just yeah. counterintuitive. Right. Yeah. Right. This Thank is you. what asking engineer is all about. Counterintuitive. Thanks, engineer. Yeah. Okay, 3D printing. Young Pedro, printing up a bunch of stuff. We have a highlight reel of a couple things that we've done in the past. They did their 3D hangout show today. But this one is the creepy hand thing. The creepy hand thing. Creepy hand. I think that's the official name. Okay, well, but wait, there's more. So you're probably thinking uh, that giant Metro is okay, but what about a mini little Raspberry Pi computer? I would like that. Okay. Okay, so we're back. Um, yeah, they got they got a, a little. It's not out yet. Don't ask. Preview. Yeah, it has something to do with the snakes. Anyways, okay. Secret knowledge. All right, micro bit. Tony D, got a micro bit thing project. Anything that you thought was interesting in the world of micro bit? Uh, yeah, so I was just at the Seattle Mini Maker Fair, and there was a really cool exhibit. I'm sorry, I totally forget the name of the person who had it, but it was a teacher. Uh, and he had a whole like learning system built with the micro bits where kids could build like uh, take a little plastic cup and put a micro bit on it and put some servos and make like a robot out of it uh, and just a real cool example of like simple little projects you can do with the micro bit great for the classroom because it, it highlights some of the features of the micro bit where it's just everything's built into the board you get it you don't have to solder things you just start programming and coding with it so shout out to anyone who's doing things in the classroom with the micro bit okay next up Tony or JP is there any uh Raspberry Pi stuff that you really just like, this is this is Raspberry Pi project that made me think, boy, this Raspberry Pi thing is super cool. Um, the Pi Zero uh, W, so I haven't played too much with that myself yet, but I love all the projects that are coming out. Like uh, Naomi Wu had the Pi palette that was like the makeup kit. Oh, yeah, that yeah. could be like the hacker tool set. And so using that tiny little Pi Zero W, like that's just awesome. Like projects like that where you know it's a tiny little thing, but it's actually a rogue access point that's you know going to hack over everything. So that's yeah. my, my favorite stuff. Mm -hmm. JP, any off the top of your head? Um, yeah, off the top of my head, it, one thing that and this has been done a lot, but using uh, like a full size Pi, not the zero, but the full size Pi as a video player 
uh, for looping stuff. Uh, also, like theme parks. That's cool. Yeah. The uh, the thing I haven't seen people do, which I think is an interesting idea, is using a light sensor to adjust color timing and uh, oh, yeah. and mm. brightness of the yeah. display in a in a f real feedback loop. Yeah. Maybe using a camera to look at the environment so that you can. I, I, again, that's a big part of making these things not look like they're emissive displays, but yeah, like it dims when it's dims when it needs when there's, to it's bright and gets really bright when it gets dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, the I haunted house ride they figured it out. There's a lot you could do with GPIO on top of those players. That's that cool. I think could be neat. Yeah, okay. and sensors and stuff. Yep. Neat. Okay, um, Lady Ada, we uh, did a broadcast on yeah. Saturday night. So you did a, a tour of. Adafruit for yep. MIT. Yes, it's Hack MIT. Yeah. Their yearly, you know, hackathon is not for MIT only. Yeah. It's yeah. actually for uh, many engineers in the area. There were some students who were from other colleges, universities, and and from Boston and from you know around the world. Yeah. Some international even. But it was held at MIT, <coughs> and it was like about um you know making a change, making a difference in the world basically, like making yeah. projects that make people's lives better. And then you made a special announcement. Um, what did you What did you announce? Well, I wanted to make sure that because hacking, right? The word hacking is inexorably tied with MIT. MIT is a hacking culture, uh, university, and community, yeah. and it is more than just university; it's a community, right? Yeah. There's a lot of people who are there, who graduate, then come back, teach, educate, run labs, donate, and you know, I want to make sure that that hacking culture doesn't go away because I think it's the it's the most important thing about MIT. I was trying to tell the students, you know, you can learn calculus from a book. Right? You didn't go to MIT to learn calculus because if that was the whole point, you could just gotten a book out of the library. The whole yeah. point is you're going there to be around people who are hackers, who are makers, who are To creative, join a hacker community. To join a hacking community. Okay. So um, one of the things that I've noticed and students have told me is that they're sometimes um, asked or forced or pressured to sign documents that give away intellectual property. Yeah, big companies like IBM Watson just gave Sorry, invested. I have to be clear. It wasn't a donation. They was invested donation. like 200 million, or I think it was more, in MIT. So the people who worked there probably have to sign some documents. Yeah, and the people who said there's other companies, um, large companies that you know, some of them even have uh, uh, offices near campus. Yeah, and Google does, Microsoft does. And and they pressure the kids to sign. Tim Cook did the commencement speech. Yeah. The and president the, said, "You're all iPhones, iPhone products." So the the students are, are viewed as products because they have this yeah. this product in their head. So, and so what are you doing? So what I want to do is, um, I've noticed there's a trend with this where students are signing documents and they and there is, you know, they're they're held accountable to what they sign, but the other side isn't. There's no there's no checks and balances. Well, most students have entire teams of lawyers helping them, right? They have absolutely no. Oh, that's lawyers. right. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the giant companies. Exactly. Oh. MIT is made out of lawyers, and so is at Google and Microsoft and IBM. All you think they IBM have is has a bunch of lawyers. They, it is all lawyers. Oh, okay. So, so what happens now? Because you, you you mentioned this, this right? Thing. What I'm are you gonna, gonna do I'm about gonna it? Get, so, what we do about it is, um, I'm going to pay for my counsel to review these documents, these non-disclosure contracts, um, health surveys, whatever it is that students are being are, that are being put in front of students, and the students aren't told, hey, by the way, you should have counsel look at it. Just sign it. What's the big deal? Sign or no thesis for you, no PhD for you. Exactly. Sign, yeah. there, there's there's no incentive for anybody to um, give these students the information that they need to have to make the right decision. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault. They're 19 years old. Like they're being they're being given an NDA. They don't. Most 19 year olds, they commonly have uh, the contracts that they're forced to sign reviewed by a team of lawyers, right? No, they're not. And oh, MIT okay. is a university that doesn't have, you know, people who go there, they don't come from families that have a lot of money. There's a lot of people who go gotcha. to MIT and, and they're the first in their high school, or the first in their um, gotcha. community to go to college. So they don't have these resources that these megalith corporations have. Gotcha. And so I it's think almost like a fair. terms of use for what's in the students' heads. That's right. They should have someone looking out for their interests because right now, MIT hasn't demonstrated that they are looking out for the students' interests. Yeah, there was an incident that came up where there was a private health survey, and that might have been used against this, the students who were forced out of senior house. Yeah, there was so no. So there was no. There was no counsel that said you can't. You can't ask for that. And you can't use the data that way. Yeah. So um, the blog post, I, I like how it was summarized. Um, protecting the intellectual property and privacy of MIT students. So you're going to have a... That's a, right. So if, uh, you have a PGP key? A PGP key, but, yeah. and so people can start sending documents now. We're teaming up with 
um, BU, Andy MIT. Sellers at the BU MIT Cyber Law, which is great. I went yeah. to BU also, and so I, I know the struct I know the structure of these yeah. two universities. Okay, that's a nice gift that you're, you're giving. I I want to be if I I want to be effective, and from the people I've spoken to at MIT so far, a lot have contacted us and said, "I really wish that this had existed because there I had nothing." Yeah. And they were like, "I didn't know. I, I was told sign it." Yeah. And they're held to the contract, but the other side, there's there's no, there's nobody. Yeah. Holding them, like okay. they get to, they get the the other side of the contract has reviewed and documented and redlined and highlighted, yeah. and and they will they have everything exactly the way they want it, and the students don't even realize. And now that I'm running a company, I don't sign any contract that's put in front of me without having counsel look at it. Yeah. And if I did, I shouldn't be running a company. That is, it's it's unacceptable yeah. to run a company and have a contract come in and not have counsel. And how are these things happening? Are students going onto projects where, hey, you're going to get to work with MIT on a thing, but as you Well, if you're walking project, into the IBM Watson building, working on IBM Watson stuff, and it's an investment, investment means return on spend, so someone owns something, probably not the students. Probably not. Maybe they can license it, maybe they can do something. But uh, Cambridge University, so Allison, who was the president or is the president of uh, Open Source, uh, said, oh, Cambridge, I went there because you own your copyrights of your code. Um, CMU apparently, the people there Stanford own it. Stanford and CMU yeah. are, are also. Um, yeah, so. And my teacher, well, here's the thing. I, it doesn't, yes, I agree that there's there's better and, and more restrictive and less restrictive. The issue is, as an MIT student, I went there, nobody knows. Like the students don't even know what their rights are. Mm -hmm. Right, they're not even informed. Like if you're informed, like okay, hey, part of the deal of doing this is that you're going to give up all these rights, that would be one thing, but they don't know. They have they have never been given counsel or information. There's no class that they take yeah. that is like, hey, here's how to read a contract about intellectual property. They're told that they are intellectual property product. No, they were actually. But they're never informed. Yeah. You're straight up to, an iPhone. But an how, iPhone. but how are you how are you supposed to manage your intellectual? I mean, if yeah. all you do is generate intellectual property, shouldn't they be given the tools to know how to when to give that away or keep it. They, they're not even given the information to make a decision. Yeah, so next week we're meeting with some uh, lawyers from who's working on this, and then one of my goals is to help the team of people put like a an open source version of something that students could use as a template on GitHub. So maybe the companies have to say, oh, like this is what we all agree is a good bill of rights, the terms of service, what's in your head, and they have to propose, they have to make a counter proposal. Because right now I don't think it's like, well, what about this clause? We'll find don't sign it, you can't work on this thing or whatever. So anyways, we're working on that. Yeah. Okay, that's your, that's your announcement. Yep. Thanks for doing that. Bravo. Yay. Okay, uh, Adabox, new one's coming out. Adabox 5. Shipping, tomorrow yeah. night at nine, we're doing the live unboxing. Yes. We're busy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Things are a little crazy right now. But we have a little trailer. I have to do a disclaimer. Just because we do a trailer that has some Adabox ideas we might do in the future, it doesn't mean the stuff is going to be in Adabox. <laughs> like straight up, like we come up with fun things. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Like we have to plan these years in advance now. So we have some fun stuff, but please don't say like, I didn't get a MacBook Pro in this one because I saw a MacBook Pro. We live in a possibility space. It, yeah, so everyone chill. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm getting, hey, I didn't get a MacBook Pro. I saw it in the video. <laughs>
G U Y D oh, yeah. com. Stuart used to write reviews for Make, yeah. and uh, I had some questions for him about some tool stuff, and he. Actually, sometimes I'll, I'll have a question about it, and I'll find out he's got a blog post on it. Like, it's one of those things where it's all right there. So anyway, I, I want to give him a shout-out because he helped me out with some questions about, like, some uh, chop saw blades and things like that. And it's, it's great for someone to just give out That's these cool. resources freely, and he reviews everything. He just knows everything about the current tools. So. Yeah. Who else? And Todd Kurt. Uh, Todd's a friend of mine. He's probably a friend of many of yours. He's, he's a, a great guy in our maker community. He's very blinky. I've known him for, like, 10 years. We, we've known him for a long time. He's a lovely dude, forever. good friend of mine, and he is always so generous with his time uh, when I have programs questions or like I want to run a concept by him he's often like my secret army of brain power yeah. when yeah. I get stuck on stuff and uh, pioneering so Roomba hacker too pioneering Roomba Good hacker Arduino little, little Arduino stuff yeah. Yeah. so that's one of my secrets to my success is having really great smart friends who are generous with their time and knowledge and okay. so thank you Todd Tony D Get some shout outs? Uh, yeah, just shout out to uh, the Seattle Mini Maker Fair and all the folks that were there. Uh, a lot of people that have been on show and tell, like Sophie Wong, uh, Rich Albright, folks like that. Uh, had really cool stuff to show off. It was an awesome festival. Uh, and I've been going for like five years, and I think this was the best one yet. Like, it's getting bigger and better and more interesting. So the Seattle Maker scene is growing and awesome. Okay, Red. Um, if anyone wants to call us later and leave nice messages for Tony or JP, you can. And we'll, we'll play them for them later. Uh -huh. Yeah, isn't that nice? Okay. They did. It's, it's almost that time. It's that time. So before it is that time, it's the code time. It's the code. Ten percent off a free store. They did. It is time to do your song. New 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 so uh, we got a couple of noobs. We have an exciting week. Next week will be even more noobs. We have a couple of goodies. What's new? First up, we have NPSA 2907A. This is kind of basically a PN 2907A PNP transistor. We've had for a very, 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 very long time NPN transistors. And some people said, hey, you know, if you have NPNs, you should have PNPs. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So these are PNP transistors. They're kind of like high side transistors, as they're usually used as. Um, they are handy if you need a generic PNP transistor. We sell them in a pack of 10, two bucks, pretty good deal, very useful. Uh, we have them in some of our packs, but if you need them for a project, we have them in the store now. Okay, we have a book. We have a book, but not just any book. And I'll, I, I gotta make it super clear that this book, the title is, I wish it was a little longer because it's called Make Making Things Smart. But what's really cool about this book is it's actually about, it's a maker book using Esperino, which is JavaScript for microcontrollers. And as people know, uh, I'm a big fan of MicroPython and CircuitPython microcontrollers, but Esperino is also really cool because I really love this whole interpreter on microcontroller thing. I think it's a cool thing. It's a cool trend. And this book is by Gordon Williams, who is the, the lead of the Esperino project. And um, it is about how to make stuff and programming, but what's really cool is you get to do it all in JavaScript with Esperino board. So, um, check it out. It's got a lot of really good projects in it. Uh, you know, it does kind of need Esperino, but we sh uh, stuck those in the shop. We have the Esperino Pico. It's not too expensive, uh, and you can do a lot of things, and it'll kind of teach you JavaScript and making. A lot of people already know JavaScript because they, you know, took it in school, or maybe they work on web pages, or just because it's one of the most popular programming languages. Uh, this is a good way to take that knowledge and make hardware with it. Okay. Next up, last but not least, this week is mini Bluetooth keyboard. So this is something that you picked up. Yeah. Uh, this is your suggestion. So we got these as part of a like a teleprompter kit that you made, and it was really there, really handy. There, it's there's more to the story too. It's a very very small Bluetooth keyboard. We have a yeah. wireless keyboard, but it's not Bluetooth. What's nice about this oh, one? Hit it on the overhead. There. Yeah, put it on the overhead. So it's what's nice about it is it's rechargeable. It's really really teeny, but it's actually quite usable. The buttons are like clicky enough. And it's really good to pair with like a Raspberry Pi, Pi 3, Pi, Pi Zero. Um, they have uh, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy built in and Bluetooth Classic built in. This is Bluetooth Classic, but almost everything that has uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy will work with these. We used it with Android, with an iPad, with an iPhone. Um, Raspberry Pi, all that good stuff. It's just, it's just really handy yeah. because you don't need a dongle on the other side. And like, yeah, if you have a Pi Zero W especially, you don't need to plug anything in. This just mm -hmm. pairs and works. Here's the 
What's this, your side of the story? This is my side of the story. So here's I, how it really happened. I have five years of Bluetooth keyboard mistakes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have boxes of Bluetooth keyboards, and I needed something that would work specifically with an iPad because when we do some of our videos, we have to make sure that we have the notes and we have a, a teleprompter that goes through. So it needs to work with that. It needs to work with Raspberry Pi. It needs to work with a phone. It needs to work with all the stuff. It needs to be small. It needs to be rechargeable. So all it is is just like buying mistakes. Something's like, oh, half of it's okay, and maybe one day there'll be another feature, but I have to live in this current time. So this is the only one that I thought was good enough for us to stock in the store. And it paired with everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually worked. Yeah. Like you know, you have to type in the little key thing, but it, it's, it just, despite how small it is, it's really usable. Like, it, it wasn't too bad to use, but it's really, yeah. really tiny. So I think it's, it's a good... Okay. It's a good find, and like we, you, you bought one. It was like super expensive on Amazon. We got these yeah. same thing, but like yeah. a quarter because price. Because not only do I have to buy something, if it even works out, I have to buy two, because we're doing so many live videos and stuff. You can't really be in the middle of something like, well, I guess I'll wait for my Prime shipping to kick in. I'll get it. So I just buy two of everything. Yeah. That's why I have two pick and places. Okay. So Did you mentioned uh, it has nice rubbery keys. It has nice really kind of a it, nice feel. It yeah. does. It, it's like tr trust me. I have a box of like I also have a box of like Bluetooth mistakes. This one is not a Bluetooth mistake. This one actually works quite yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, Lady Ada is guess what? New parts are over. Good work. No, no. Okay. I know you have a secret thing that you wanted to show. It's top yeah. secret. It's not out yet. I do. Here it is. Why not? What is it? Well, I I was working on some more feather wings and I made um, a 3.5 inch feather wing. And um, it's just like the um, one that we have in the store that's 2.4 inches, but it's really big and high res. Wait, it's upside down. So. Yeah, you could probably move it so it. Hold on. Looks at it nicely. There you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. So it's really nice. Let me reset it so it's doing the text. So it's like, it's really high res and it's a feather wing and it's got like nice little mounting tabs and I've got like the touch interface and stuff. So I have it working with an ESP. But I have some really good ideas because this is actually like pretty high res. You could do. Um, pretty good graphics with it because uh, it's 320 by 480 but there's a couple projects that I saw online that I was like oh like this would be a really good project to do with this like for example I want to make one of these stream decks you have but you need to have it be like big enough yeah. like the other screen was just way too small and too small res so I thought with Python actually it would be really fun to make like a little button control mm -hmm. board that you could plug into USB okay. so I was like okay I need something more res so this is the more res that I got so I love feather wings okay. this is a prototype that we put together today Woo, look at all that text. Back in the vault. Yes. <laughs> Off with you. <coughs> Okie dokie, we're going to do some questions. Um, the Discord overlay stuff that we do to do some neat graphic -y stuff, it's not working today. Mm. But that's okay, because we're in the chat room. So in the chat room, answer your questions. I'll ask them to the team here. You can ask anything to JP or Tony or Lady Ada or the snakes. me or the snakes. Um, oh yeah, we got a question for what is the snake. So um, we're working on something really cool. I, I can't actually talk about that yet. So these are pink and purple Blinka snakes or pythons. I, I, I painted these and then I, but I, uh, I have like 17 pounds of pink snakes right now. Of course you do. Yeah, like that's what I got. <laughs> so, um, so that's what those snakes are No, for. we went to the Halloween, the costume awesome. magic yeah. store. And, oh. uh, well, for Tony D, yeah, Tony D, if someone wanted to get started with CircuitPython, MicroPython, what do you suggest they do? Uh, definitely check out learn.adafruit.com slash category slash MicroPython or slash CircuitPython. Uh, that has a bunch of guides. And there are some that walk you through just the basics because if you've used Arduino, it's a little bit different for how you edit code, for example. But look at Circuit Playground Express. I think that's the great kind of starter project because it's, everything's built into it. You've got lights, you've got sensors, buttons, and things like that. So grab that and then get Circuit Python loaded on it. The guide uh, will show how to do that. And then you can just start going crazy and exploring. The cool thing is you can use the REPL. You just type in some Python code, see what happens. You don't have to worry. Like, you're not going to break anything. So just experiment and have fun. Do you have it. any fun uh, or favorite online resources for learning Python just in uh, general? Yeah. So and in my Maker Fair talk, actually, I have a oh, whole timely. bunch of links. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but check out Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. Mm -hmm. And that's a website. It's, um, I think, mm -hmm docs.python-guide.org or something like that. Anyways, check that out. It has a learning Python resource that's updated. It's curated by the community. has links to great things. Uh, if you just want a link, Code Academy has a free course. Google has a free course online. There's lots of free resources for Python. It's great. Okay. This one is for Lady Ada or maybe Tony, maybe JP. Um, this came up in the YouTube chat. Um, why do you think the Raspberry Pi is more popular than the BeagleBone? 
Um, I think Raspberry Pi Foundation actually put a lot more effort into the operating system software and documentations. For example, I could never get Wi-Fi working on the BeagleBone for such a long time, and it kind of like drove me crazy. So it was, it was stopping me from doing a lot of projects. I was like, well, if Wi-Fi is being really flaky, you know, I can't do a project that I would suggest to someone because it'll just like die. I'll have to reboot it. Whereas Raspberry Pi actually um, had a team of people that just had more resources that they could dedicate to making the operating system, I think, really stable. And it is quite stable. Okay. Yeah, probably cost too. <laughs> cost help. Yeah, yeah, cost doesn't. Yeah, I think documentation is key. If your goal is to do things with it and you Google a question, you're going to come up with a nice tutorial on Raspberry Pi pretty quickly, usually. Yeah. I Just to do it from like maker business point of view, I'll, I'll put that hat on for a second. So is someone who's had to analyze like the maker market or the microchip market or the development board market, it seemed to me like the TI engineers thought this was an eval board for something that TI was doing. And then there was the BeagleBone Foundation, BeagleBone people are like, no, this is for education. And those things are so opposite. Mm. And when you would talk to TI folks, it was like, look at this cool eval board. BeagleBone is like, oh no, this is the thing we're going to use for education and all this stuff. So I think it's hard where it was very clear that Raspberry Pi, it's not a Broadcom development board. It's not an eval board for Broadcom. Yeah. So I think that was just like one of the approaches that, that happened. Um, another thing is, uh, this was, is that JavaScript for Explorer interpreted by code or virtual? It's interpreted. Okay. I mean, you write, last I checked for Spirino, you actually put the JavaScript text on the board and it runs it. I don't believe that, I don't believe there's, it, it might be on the fly bytecode interpreted like okay. interpreted and then turn into bytecode, but uh, you write, you don't compile it. Is the Intel S and did? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. I wrote about that. Yeah, good run. <laughs> yeah, it's it's dead. I think the the Arduino 101 that Intel did that was the one that had the most sales. And the it most had th that one was extended, but it was yeah. also uh, I believe it was also discontinued. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next up. Wanting to add custom sound to an easy button staples, which audio FX board should I use? The one with the two watt amp or the one without the amp, able to drive a small easy button speaker? You know, for ease of use with the amp, amp it's just, amp. yeah, it's amp. all in one. The amps um, have it. Amp. It, but if it fits, right? If it doesn't fit, you would use the mini and then a separate amp. So you're going to measure it. Okay. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh, what's Ampy, Tony? <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> it's the Adafruit MicroPython tool. So it's just oh. a tool to put code on a board okay. uh, with MicroPython. All right. Uh, succession for CircuitPython and an iPad without a PC, Mac, or Internet, specifically creating editing programs with the iPad running on CircuitPython. Yeah, we'd like to do that. Right now, Apple doesn't let you do that. We'd like to. Well, the one exception is Web <laughs> Repl with ESP8266. If you set that up, then yeah. you can edit from your iPad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a little difficult. Yeah. I have zero information about this. But here's a future we can live in. So Apple has um, Swift Playgrounds. We have Circuit Playground. You could imagine a, like a Bluetooth thing that is a Circuit Playground could potentially one day work with Swift Playgrounds. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, when we get to yeah. like the NRF52840. Tim Cook, call me. Um, and then, you know, we'd have a USB and Bluetooth capable circuit Python board. Right now, we don't have anything. And the, the playground words even match up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what do some feathers have both a, a 0804 and 0603 passives? Well, for resistors, it doesn't really matter whether you use 0806 or 0603 or 0805 or 0603. But with capacitors, um, especially the bigger capacitors, you do want a larger package because the capacitance degrades faster with a smaller package. So all things being equal, a 10 microfarad 0805 will act better at uh, a DC blocking, at a, a DC bias voltage than a 603. So I tend to go with a bigger part. Also, there's usually a cost difference, especially for capacitors, because like you are size limited. Like you can't have 220 microfarads in a 603. It just doesn't exist. <coughs> um. What is one item that you think uh, would be good for a 10-year-old getting, getting this sort of thing? Could it be a board or a component or a kit? Well, according to the show and tell tonight, apparently like a supercomputer or like, uh, you know, the, we had an eight-year-old that's working on their own operating system. So a 10-year-old doesn't mean as much as an age anymore. I guess it's like, what, what would they want to do? I think a circuit playground board is pretty good. Yeah. You have a lot of options. They can start with make code. 
which yeah. is drag and drop, really easy, and then they can upgrade to Circuit Python and then move up to Arduino. So it's, there's a lot of possibilities. Okay, suggestion for kids, JP, and then Tony. I agree oh, with Circuit. Well, let's do Tony first. Yeah, he has go. Go. yeah uh, a Raspberry Pi. If I had a Raspberry Pi when I was 10, it would have blown my mind. <laughs> I wanted to make computer games, and it was like, how do you do that on this crazy DOS machine? Raspberry Pi. Okay. Cool. Yeah, no, Circuit Player Express is amazing because of the you won't get bored because there's so many <coughs> outputs and inputs, lights and sensors, switches, buttons, it's all right there. So there's like no impediment to wiring mistakes and breadboarding. Not that that stuff is bad to learn, but you will immediately have all the stuff at your disposal with Circuit Playground Express. So I dig it. Okay. Well, we're going to give away something. So let's start getting to that later. Okay. Um, before we do that, let's also go to the code. Code time. Save some money. 10% off everything in the store except for gift certificates, eight a box, yeah. subscriptions. So we're going to do a trivia question. What are the rules of the trivia? Trivia question is like super easy. So we're going to give away a thing. We're going to give away a Bluetooth mini keyboard because we've all agreed that it's very nice and has a nice rubbery buttons. Yeah, we JP, all agree. JP agrees, I we all agree. Super agree. And it's useful with anything. And um, to win it, all you have to do is call the phone number when we put it up on the screen and answer three questions. The questions are going to be, what's your name? Where are you calling from? And what's a project that you're working on or you want to work on? So those are the questions, the trivia questions. But they're easy because hopefully you know your name and where you are at this point in time. Uh, okay. All you have to do is tell us a project you're working on. And the first person to call this phone number that I pick up and answers wins the prize. Okay. It's pretty easy. All right. Well, the phone lines are open. So call this phone number. Whoa! Whoa. That was Somebody super, that was, super fast. was fast. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Go for it. Hello, you have reached Ask Engineer, and you're the winner. Congratulations. Yay. Yay, great. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Wow. Okay. Wait, one second. Is that microphone on? Yeah, the microphone's on. Is it on mute or not? No. Right. Sorry, Greg, just hold on one second. One second. Tell her not to do anything. Hang out. Do, 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 do. Hold music. La, 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 la. Let's just pretend that we're starting over. Congratulations, you're the winner. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, well, thanks. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I'm from Cary, North Carolina. Okay, thank you, Daniel, from North Carolina. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Uh, I actually was just in my garage working on an arcade cabinet. Ooh, arcade cabinets are super cool. Well, this will be very handy because you can pair this little Bluetooth keyboard and then you can control it Perfect. if, you know, the arcades get a lot of whack or you want to load up a game. So all you have to do to, to claim your prize is email support at adafruit.com and say, hey, this is Daniel from North Carolina and I won product number uh, 3601. And we will send that to you as soon as possible. And then when you finish your arcade cabinet, I would personally like if you showed up on Show and Tell and maybe showed it off for us, because that sounds really cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, have a great night, Daniel. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Don't forget to email. All right. Okay, bye. bye. Okay. Whatever you did fixed it. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> You're like, I didn't do anything. But okay. I wiggled <laughs> cables. That's always going to work. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the show for tonight, everybody. Thanks for doing this. All right. You yeah, can still call and leave us a message if you want. Um, some of us will be at Maker Fair. Check out the Discord chat, good events. Yes, added to the Maker Fair um, channel. We'll be doing a couple more live broadcasts. We have one tomorrow night. Yep, beta box unboxing. Maybe some over the weekend. Uh, any closing thoughts? GP, Tony? No, just be awesome and make stuff. Yeah? yeah. All right. Easy stuff. We'll see a lot of you soon. Here is a picture of Mosfet the cat. Meow. Just say Mosfet the cat. Someone emailed and said, you know, he has a name. I'm like, you know, you're so right. So now I remember every time. I can't just not say, just here's a cat. It's not just a cat. He's Mosfet the cat. No, it's not just yeah. a cat. That is Mosfet the cat. Yeah. All right. Here's your moment of Zener, and we'll see everybody soon. Okay, folks. Good night. Bye. -bye. Bye.